This week we find out if hovering is ever going to be in our future. Not that kind of hovering, Stu. We're talking about hoverboards. Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech from your favorite movies, TV shows, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Last week, Dr. Ronald Mallet gave us some tips on traveling through time. What happens is, is that you can actually use gravity to twist time into a loop. And guys, like I said before, if you request a Bruce Willis movie, chances are it's total BS. In 1989, Michael J. Fox, AKA Marty McFly, was caught awkwardly floating his way out of trouble. This wheel-less pink skateboard, deemed the hoverboard, has been a coveted piece of sports tech ever since. I want one. Correction, I've wanted one since the moment I saw Marty skitch his way around town. Nearly 24 years later, yes, I'm old, I may have found some awesome Dutch guys that will make my hovering dreams come true. Hey, Gare, thank you so much for joining us from the Netherlands tonight. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, Marty McFly cruising on a hoverboard is quite possibly one of the best moments in cinema history. Uh, is it true that you're bringing the hoverboard technology to real life? Well, we are trying to, so we're making a little step in that direction. Can you tell me about the technology that's supporting this right now? I, I expected some kind of electromagnetic levitation system. I can show us your, our basic uh, technology. Huh? So here you can see it. Huh? Mm -hmm. It has uh, a little uh, base part huh? and it has a floating part. Floating part is a magnet ring and there are also magnets inside this base part. Those magnets, they repel. Huh? So they push each other away. Yeah? I can show you also a little bit detail under the hood of the system. Yeah? So, so you see the eye here in the middle, yeah? so like a little camera, and you see the electromagnets. And of course there are permanent magnets. And there is some confidential electronics uh, be hidden. The super secret the stuff. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> now would this be strong enough to support a human being that would want to ride something like that? Uh, I think uh, uh, it's possible to carry a human, but I think it's going to happen in steps. Huh? So the first thing would be to really have a board support one human on one spot. The next step would be to uh, slide along a rail. Huh? The last step would be, of course, that you really can float over a big surface. I think all those things are possible huh? in, the, in the future. Of course, there is a lot of technology which has to be developed. And of course, it will be really expensive, uh, at least at the moment. In the movie, you can see that Marty is floating, you know, this far above, above the, the ground. But I don't think that's possible, at least not with the present uh, magnet technology. Now, what would propel the board forward? Does one still need to push off the ground like regular skateboarding? Yeah, yeah, well, that, that's so. Of course, you can also make it propelling, but I think the, the nicest thing is to really make it move yourself yeah, so that you really can push it and it will move by your own pushing one action. And, and, and how would one steer at that point? Because I mean, if, if it's not actually touching the ground, I feel like would putting weight on one side or the other still be able to turn you? I think with, with the proper technology in the floor part, yeah, that will be possible. Yeah. So you have to think about a floor which is full of magnets, full of coils, Electron uh, electronics everywhere, eh? and that electronics will know in which direction you are moving. So you definitely need like a separate kind of rail device yeah, or a, something yeah, built yeah, into yeah. the ground. You need a rail or a, a floor with, you know, full of uh, magnets. So I feel like that yeah. might wreak havoc on our cell phones and other electronic <laughs> devices a little bit if if the floors were made of magnets. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so are you familiar with the Mattel hoverboards? Are, are there as much different? Well, the Mattel hoverboard is just a replica. Huh? So it can only slide over a surface because it does not have any electromagnets inside. But it's a real nice replica. Yeah, it would be really fun to put your yeah. technology inside the, the replica hoverboard and then and yeah. maybe sell that to consumers. Yeah, yeah, that's so. So, uh, like uh, the, the one of Niels Radigan, you've seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, so on on YouTube there are videos of Niels. Uh, he bought a number of our magnetic systems. He built that in Hooverboard, and well, he is uh, showing that around the world. So you do see but, this as being something that can can actually hit the marketplace for consumers sometime uh, in the, in the I, relatively I, I near could, future. I, I, well, yeah, it's 
it could if there is demand. So in your estimation then the, the, the technology is basically almost there. It's just more of a matter of, of cost and, and the kind of thing that would, would this be something people would actually pay a lot of money for? Mainly a cost issue. I think at this moment you've already start a project at least to, uh, to have somebody move on the rail. Huh? That would be the first step. Huh? You know, a human carried by a board moving along on rail. Huh? And then the next step would be to float on a, you know, a, a large floor or whatever. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gary. I hope to be riding one of your hoverboard uh, skateboards sometime in the near future to work. Okay. Although it sounds like maybe not so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I took to the Twitters to find out what you guys thought, and Will Wheaton got back to us saying, I'm looking forward to surly kids still not being able to land a single trick while they get in my way at the bank drive through At Sean Mave said, Fact, if I recall, scientists have already made spiders levitate using super sciencey wizardry of science. At Great Wall of Chin said, I suspect the technology will arrive right before the first lawsuit. And then this article says, no, it is not in our future. But whatever, Slate, I'm optimistic and I'm giving hoverboards a fact. Yeah, sure, maybe they aren't ready for my mad hovering moves, but we've seen boards float already. It's just a matter of time before we can ride them. I mean, these guys can do it. And do you want your face on Fact or Fictional? Let me know your hopes for hoverboard technology. Also, let me know what tech you want to see right here on the show. And if it's tricky enough, you might see yourself on a future episode. And if you're interested in learning more about time travel, go check out the full interview with Dr. Mallet. It is seriously interesting stuff. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and go take a peek at ThreatWire, the new show from the Hack5 folks. It wasn't until 1995 that NSFNet, a network run by, again, the US government's National Science Foundation, ended sponsorship of their backbone services and lifted its final restrictions on commercial traffic flowing over the internet. They will cover all of your online security concerns. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont and this is Factor Fictional on TechFeed. See you next time. The holiday season is rapidly approaching, so all of us here at TechFeed have decided to give away some swag, but you gotta earn it first. For starters, I have a $25 Amazon gift card as well as a TechFeed t-shirt. Take a long, hard look at the set. Now, there are a few things that have changed, and the first person to name all of them wins. What do you think about some of those games? I'm, I'm pretty done with Mario at this point. I think I'm going to incur the wrath of Nintendo fanboys all over the internet, but I just, I think they need to move on. I think it's time.